Major breaking news in Congress, 11th hour maneuvering ahead of an imminent government shutdown that promises to be very, very painful for millions and millions of Americans. CNN's Melanie Zanona is up on Capitol Hill as these late developments are unfolding. Melanie, House Republicans, I understand, have been meeting now for over an hour. Have they made any progress? What are you hearing? Well, well, there's no breakthroughs as of this moment. And really, at this point, there are no magic wands that can solve this issue when you have just 24 hours before the government funding deadline and no progress thus far from House Republicans. They have been meeting now almost two hours, actually, behind closed doors, where Kevin McCarthy tried to lay out the options that they have before them. The first option is to pass the House GOP stopgap bill, which already failed once, so that's probably not going to happen. They can accept the Senate's plan, which is working its way through the Senate, probably not going to do that until Sunday or Saturday that when they're going to be able to finish that. But that has Ukraine money, which is probably a non-starter for a lot of the Republican conference in the House. They can also try to just put what's known as a clean stopgap spending bill on the floor, which has no add-on provisions, just a really temporary measure to keep the government uh, lights on for a little bit of time while they try to do their long-term spending bills. And the final option, Wolf, is to shut down the government. Now, they're working through these options as we speak. They don't have a consensus as of right now. They are trying to find a path forward, and they will be here tomorrow. But in the meantime, it's really created some Republican tension inside the GOP. Take a listen. Unfortunately, uh, a handful of people, and in particular a party of one, Matt Gates, uh, have chosen to put his own agenda, his own personal agenda, above all else. Uh, there's only one person to blame for any potential government shutdown, and that's Matt Gates. He's not a conservative Republican, he's a charlatan. They killed the most conservative position we could take, um, and then called themselves the real conservatives, which is like, make that make sense. You can't make it make sense. The speaker's continuing resolution went down in flames. As I've told you all week, it would. So the bottom line here is there is no plan to avert a government shutdown and tensions inside the GOP are at an all-time high wolf. All right, Melanie, Melanie Zanona up on Capitol Hill. Thank you. Uh, joining us now, a lawmaker who just emerged from that meeting of the House Republican Caucus, Republican Congressman Mark Molinaro of New York is joining us. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us. Is a shutdown now inevitable? And how do you explain why this is happening to the millions of Americans who will go unpaid and lose so many other key government functions? I think that's what's important, Wolf, to start with. There is simply no excuse. This could have been and still can be averted, but there are two, there, there, are, there are members both within the Republican conference, and quite frankly, there are even Democrats unwilling uh, to cross over the line uh, in order to, in this case even today, support a short-term funding mechanism that at least focused our attention on border security and, and confronted the massive amount of federal spending that, you know, Americans want us to confront. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it, we are working hard, believe me, there are members like myself working hard uh, because we understand the impact. A, a government shutdown is in no one's best interest uh, and it is a mistake uh, to get engaged in the theatrics instead of delivering for the people who are at home hoping that their government's going to function for them. Is it a mistake, Congressman, for the Speaker Kevin McCarthy not to work with Democrats to find a bipartisan compromise to fund the federal government? Well, listen, the speaker's in the same position everyone else is. He still have to get to 218 votes. And, and yes, a bipartisan solution is ultimately what's going to happen. We have a Democrat Senate, we have a Republican House, and a Democrat president. Anyone who thinks that the end result isn't going to be bipartisan, I, I have a bridge in New York to sell you. But, but, but the truth is, the strongest position for us has always been to confront the massive amount of federal spending that, uh, quite frankly, the Democrats, one party, stuffed into this economy that drove up inflation and to confront border security. The fact that, that we haven't gotten there uh, just is inexcusable. It's not something that we should accept. Uh, but there are those of us willing to work, certainly as I have across uh, the, the, the party aisle, to deliver on, on a result. Uh, I'm just hopeful that we can, uh, we can mold some consensus now uh, and avert a shutdown. As you know, some GOP hardliners say they will vote to remove McCarthy from the speakership if he actually goes ahead and works with Democrats. Is the speaker placing his job ahead of keeping the government open. 
No, I think the speaker's uh, trying his best, uh, and, and, and by the way, has invested a lot of energy to try to bring us together. You know, I was engaged in a number of the conversations over the course of the last uh, seven days. These are just some deeply held beliefs, but, but, but some short-term, uh, I, I think, uh, 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 views here. You, you, we cannot get through the consideration of, of a budget plan uh, without having the government continue to function uh, for the American people. Uh, but, but again, I, I think anybody who makes this personal uh, is doing a disservice not only to themselves, uh, but to the people they represent. This, this has to be about delivering uh, a government that respects taxpayers, confronts federal spending, and from our perspective, I think also uh, addresses the massive uh, crisis at our border. Republican Congressman Ken Buck says today's failed spending vote in the House was in effect, and he's using these words, a vote of no confidence in McCarthy. Is he right? No, he's, he's wrong. And listen, all the theatrics and, and, and all of the uh, escalating rhetoric, you know, there are, there are, there are businesses at, uh, all across America, farmers and families who just want us to get to a solution. No, no, he's wrong. And, but what, what, is, what is right uh, is that we've got to find our way to delivering at least some message that we're con where we consider and respect taxpayers. We're willing to confront federal spending and address the border. And, and quite frankly, uh, uh, the people we represent deserve that from us. As you know, millions of Americans, including a lot of children, could lose food assistance benefits during a prolonged shutdown. You know firsthand how important these programs like food stamps can be to families. And the impact of losing them will have an enormous, enormous uh, impact indeed. Are, are they being prioritized enough? Uh, that's exactly right, Wolf. Well, thanks for saying so. I grew up on food stamps. I've lived through government shutdown, shuts, shutdowns. A at the end of the day, uh, we, have, we have an obligation uh, to provide for the most vulnerable in our society. And at the very least, at the very least, that, that is one reason. That funding our military and, and, and paying the men and women uh, who provide and sacrifice uh, for this country, those should be the reasons that we find our way to short-term funding and then long-term commitment to drive down federal spending. But you are absolutely correct. And I hope my colleagues hear that uh, as, as I would express it and have, there are too many people struggling too hard. They deserve and demand a government that's functioning, and we better, we better do that for them. And children, uh, of course, especially, deserve to have some food every day as well. Congressman mm -hmm. Mark Molinaro of New York, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Wolf.